Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. If you aren't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I have a very interesting video for everyone today. I know a lot of you are actually repeat watchers, so if you hit that subscribe button, you can make sure that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. I focus a lot on high fashion, and I also love to travel as well. I do a lot of vlogs, so that means that if you subscribe, you can come and see the world with me which would be so exciting. And I also do a lot of informational videos as well. So things like today's video, which is going to be a bag review. Um, it's really helpful. I like to try and be as helpful as I can. And in saying that, um, I will always try and be in try and be engaging. So if you guys leave any comments, um, have any questions, feel free to DM me. Um, please follow me on Instagram. I think it's over on this side that my name comes up. Um, follow me on Instagram, DM me, you know, whatever it is, I will always try and get back to you guys and always try and be as helpful as I can. Now, before I get started on the video, I wanted to just quickly address the coronavirus situation because, um, it is obviously a very negative thing that's happening in the world and my heart goes out to everyone that is or has been affected by it. Um, the positive thing is that there is an 89% survival rate. So, you know, it's no reason to panic. It is a really, really horrible situation, but I just want everyone um, to be informed and, and not panic because if we all panic, then the world will really go to absolute crap but it is a quickly devolving situation and if any of you have seen Contagion um, that's exactly what will the movie Contagion if we all panic then the world will truly end up like that but if we all stay calm and if we all listen to what the government says isolation good practice in hygiene we should all most of us should be fine but um, yes my heart does go out to those people that have been or are currently affected so, with that being said, um, I don't want to, you know, have any negative news. There is already enough negativity in the world. So, um, I am going to keep my content business as usual. Um, coronavirus has actually um, started to affect my, my own household. Um, my partner potentially may be affected or infected. And so, we are now distancing ourselves. He sleeps in a separate room. I don't touch him, he doesn't touch me, we don't come within a metre and a half of each other. Um, so, you know, it it is affecting my life personally. But I want to keep my channel and my content business as usual because, like I said, there is enough negativity in the world and we don't need more of it. I want you guys to be able to come to my content, come to my channel, click on a video and just kind of take yourself away from all the crap that's happening um, at the moment. And also at the same time, in the case of this video, be informed, you know, get educated about, you know, what bags might be useful for you. You know, the next time you go shopping, you'll have a better um, awareness of what you like, what you don't like. You can pop into the Chanel store and you'll know a little bit more about the boy bag. Now, I also wanted to address the fact that I have been away for the last couple of weeks, and that's because with this whole coronavirus mess, um, my office, and as some of you may know, I work in a law firm, so um, soon to be a lawyer, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, so some positive news for everyone, I am due to be admitted on the 27th of March, so from that day on, I will be an official lawyer. So that's really exciting. It's a huge milestone in my life, um, but yeah. So, um, just to gloss over that, we, um, for the last two weeks, I've been absent because um, our firm has been transitioning into a work from home environment. It has been business as usual at work. In terms of the workload, we are giving our clients the complete full service that we always do. Um, we are not compromising anywhere. What that means is that my workload has stayed the same up here. Um, but then now on top of that, I have to, um, for the last couple of weeks, have had to make adjustments in terms of, you know, sorting out technical issues, working from home, making sure, you know, changing my routine and everything like that. Um, so it has been quite um, an intensive mess. Um, that being said, uh, that is, that's why I have been away. But that being said, I am back now. Everything is now settled. Um, even though, you know, my partner is 
um, potentially got infected, because we've already sorted out the work from home arrangements, I am all okay. But I'm back now, I'm ready to go, you know, I'm ready to punch out these videos, I'm ready to give you guys some really, really good content. That being said, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below. I will always take it on board and I'll always try and improve day by day, video by video, because I want to give you guys the best experience possible. So without further ado, let's finally get into the video. Today's video is going to be about a Chanel boy bag review. Um, actually, the proper name is Chanel Le Boy. So we are going to talk about the good, the bad, well, obviously the bag, <laughs> but we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I just thought this would be a good video to put out at this time because there has been so much hype around the new... Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, there has just been so much hype around the Chanel 19 bag, the fresh, the new and improved classic Chanel 19 bag. And I just thought that the Chanel Le Boy has been kind of forgotten. And for anyone, I wanted to do this video because for anyone who is going to walk into Chanel and they are thinking of investing in a Chanel bag, I wanted to give you guys an option. I wanted to give you guys something else um, that you might want to add to your, you know, consideration, um, your wish list perhaps, and maybe get the Le Boy instead of the Chanel 19. Now you will get my thoughts at the end of the video as to which I prefer. So let's get right into it. So here is the beautiful bag that I'm going to be talking about today. Now, as some of you may know, um, I had uh, featured this bag in my previous video where I did five outfits um, of styling my Balmain blazer. And one of those outfits had included this beautiful bag. So I thought I would just go into a bit more detail about it in this video, give you guys um, a detailed overview. But this beauty is just it's stunning, guys. It really is. Um, when I first saw it, it really took my breath away, and I just thought that I had to have it. Literally, um, I got this in Melbourne, I think, like three years ago, um, or four years ago, and I, we, me and my best friend Michelle, we walked into the Chanel store. I had no intention of buying a bag. Walked in just to browse. I saw this bag, um, and I was like, Oh my god, like I'm a I am a firm believer of love at first sight, at least in terms of you know buying something expensive. My golden rule is that if you're buying anything luxury, anything designer, if it's not love at first sight, you should probably just walk away because these things are far, far too expensive to have second thoughts or to second guess yourself. Because if you don't love it, like that on the first go when you first see it, it's um it's actually uh, just probably not worth buying. I mean, obviously there are exceptions. Sometimes you know I have walked away from something and I've come back and I'm like, oh my god, it's it's grown on me now. I really really love it. But that's you know my golden rule. Uh, this is as you can see the Chanel Le Boy in a navy color. My blue is my favorite color as well. So when I saw this bag, that was one of the reasons why it took my breath away because it's so beautiful. Um, and yeah, it's just it's stunning. So it's in the chev. Uh, navy chevron pattern in the leather. It's a caviar leather, so it's very, very durable. It doesn't scratch. Um, and it's it's still very soft. Um, the leather is still very soft, but it's not as kind of like buttery um, as lambskin is. So it's calf leather, um, but yeah, with a pressed pebble effect, which is um, the caviar name. Um, it doesn't have any feet, as you can see. It's just a base here, um, and it's very kind of like, you know, cushiony, very padded. It's very nice. It has ruthenium hardware, so it's just this brushed antique gunmetal kind of, you know, aged silver. Um, there, it's got the CC logo in the front, and it has a leather strap. Um, at the top as well, so it doesn't kind of dig into your shoulder. Click on the front here to unlock it. It flips open and it's just one compartment on the inside. So, um, you know, it's lined with 
think it's just a cotton canvas lining. Um, but that has its benefits. So obviously the con is that it doesn't feel as luxurious when it's not lined with leather. Um, most of my other bags are lined with leather. My Fendi Peekaboo is lambskin on the inside, so when I reach for anything, it's like so smooth, so buttery, it's incredible. It's like a heavenly experience having my hand inside my back. <laughs> But at the same time, I always worry that my rings, my jewellery, my nails will scratch the leather. I mean, it's on the inside of the bag, so it's not that big of a deal. But still, it feels a lot more luxurious. Um, so that's kind of like the downside of not having a leather lining. But the kind of the, the benefit is that um, when it's not lined with leather, uh, you're a lot less kind of worried about scratching. Like, you know, you can, you know, it doesn't matter. You can have your keys in there and you can just have a go at it. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's also a lot more lightweight as well. So um, if you have leather inside and the outside, the bag becomes a little bit more heavier. And in the moment when you're in the store trying it on, you don't really notice because you at most holding the bag for like two to five minutes, right? But when you start to wear this and, um, you know, you're going to start noticing because you're going to be wearing it every single day pretty much all day if you're going out. Like a bag like this, this is a casual bag. So you're going to be wearing this when you go shopping, when you run errands. It's not going to be a bag that you take to work um, because if you do take it to work, you just have it on the commute and then you put it down for the rest of the day and you don't really pick it up until you commute home. So in that case, those kind of bags have a leather lining, that's fine if it's heavier. These casual bags, if it's more heavy, even if it's just 100 grams more heavy, trust me, your shoulder will feel the difference. Um, and so just to give you an idea of my experience with the bag, because it's a casual bag, I will usually either wear it um, on a casual Friday or to run errands through the weekend. So on average, I wear this twice a week. Over three years, I think I've had this bag for three years, right? So there's 52 weeks in a year. Twice a week, that's 100 times. Three years, I've worn this bag 300 times. So that's my experience with this bag. So you can trust that, you know, what I'm saying, it's not It's not like I've only used this bag nine or ten times and I'm like, ooh, complaining. This is actually personal, you know, like, hard-working experience. We'll start, um, I've kind of already kind of like started on the on, on the pros and cons, um, so just, you know, talking you through it a little bit more. One thing I didn't mention to you guys is the size. Um, this is not the small, it's actually called the medium, medium, oh no, no, not the medium large, sorry, that's, that terminology is for the classic flat. Um, this is the older medium. So for a handful of years, Chanel was releasing boy bags in a new medium, which is kind of the same length, but about like that much taller. So it was a bit more square and that was the new medium. Um, but they were still releasing boy bags in this shape. And this was the original, you know, the OG. So, um, people in the Lux community or the Chanel community um, coined this the old medium size. So I have this in the old medium size. And yeah, it's like really, really good size. Um, the bag, as you can see, is very structured. It doesn't really like, you know, it's not like floppy like a Neverfull, like a Louis Vuitton Neverfull. It's not just like falls on itself. It's very structured. So the next point I wanted to raise is while I had the bag open, it's open now. But while I had the bag open, um, I wanted to talk about the space because that is actually one of the really positive things about this bag. It is deceptively roomy. Because you don't have any compartments inside and the sides can stretch out a little bit so you can see that the sides are curved. Well, I'm not sure if you can see that. Hold on. Ooh. So you can see that the sides are curved in. So when you have it stuffed a little bit, it can kind of like stretch out and kind of give it a bit more depth. You know, it can kind of like come, it can be a little bit thicker. So you've got a lot of room in there. And without any compartments in there, you are basically free to stuff things and, and shift things and organize things however you want, right? So how I usually do this if I'm going out is I can fit um, two pouches. So it'll sit um, kind of like that. 
and then I put my keys which will fit on the inside on this side and then on top of that I put my um, you can put a pack of mints in there which you can just slide on top of your keys and then you can put hand sanitizer which is so important right now you can put hand sanitizer just kind of sitting on the top and then if you're wearing sunglasses or something you can just kind of like pop them in the on the top like it doesn't even have to be inside the bag but it can just sit on top here because when the flap closes you've actually got a little bit of space on top of the bag that space isn't actually big enough for your glasses to fall off now a lot of other reviews that I've watched um, they do talk about the fact that this space is actually a con because if you have say like lipstick it can fall out I use pouches. I like to organize my things in pouches and so all of my hair ties, bobby pins, lipsticks, lip whatever, all the small items, um, you know, perfume bottles, they're all in a pouch so I never worry about it sliding out. So maybe that's something that you might, you guys might be wanting to consider, you know, investing in a really nice Chanel pouch. Um, I have one and it is fabulous. Um, but anyways, so you've got that, right? You've got, you know, extra space that you can just pop your sunnies in. So if you think about it, that's a lot of stuff that you can stuff in there. And then on top of that, there is still room. Pouches are usually not square, right? They're like shaped. Let me grab one for you. So they're usually shaped like this, right? So they're, you know, curved up the top and then, so that means up here you can still fit. If you have two pouches side by side, let me get another one. <clears throat> so if you have two pouches side by side like this, you can see that there's still gap in the middle here. So you can slide in, you know, another, you, you can slide in a pack of tissues, you can slide in, um, you know, any sort of small tidbit that you want. Maybe you do want to put your lip balm here, and then if you have something on top of it, that lip balm isn't going to slide out of this gap, right? Um, but look, I think that there are definitely ways to get around, um, you know, stuff falling out. I, I've never had that problem, but like I said, I use pouches, so... Um, it's not an issue for me anyway. If you have loose items, so if you have, if you just chuck your hair ties in there, your lipsticks, you know, your whatever, all your small things without a pouch and you chuck that in here, then sure, it can potentially fall out. But let's be honest, how often are you going to tip your bag upside down? I don't think I've ever tipped my bag upside down. So you've got all of that room inside the bag. And what's even better is that the bag is still so small. It just sits on my waist. Like, look how small it is. And it can honestly pass off as a belt bag. I mean, I have a big frame, so that's a bit different. And, um, you know, I think for some of you, you might, you might have a smaller frame or you might be as big as me, but it is, it's still a really, really small bag and it's a casual bag. So it'll never really get in your way. And it's just, it's really, really good. So it's a huge positive for me. And speaking of the size of the bag, um, that's even more positive for me because it's so small that I can basically slip it anywhere. It's never kind of in my way. If I'm at lunch, I can pop it on the table and it's not like hugely overbearing that it's in like everyone's faces and you're like, hi, how are you? You know, it's like so small that it's just barely noticeable. Still, ca still eye catching. So if you put it on the table, you're sure to get some compliments, um, which I often have. Um, but, you know, if that's not your kind of thing, which is totally fine, you can put it beside you on the chair, it doesn't take up any room, you can put it behind you. This bag, the size is perfect, how much it can fit is perfect, it's so good. Two huge, huge positives for me. Another huge positive for me um, with this bag is the versatility that you have in wearing it. So you can wear this bag as a shoulder bag, like this. You can wear it crossbody like this. And I mean, I'm sitting down right now, so it doesn't look too outrageous. But for a lot of people, and other people have mentioned this, um, if you do wear this crossbody, it is quite short. It actually just sits, it sits right on my hip, like right above my hip. So it's kind of like that. Um, so most of the time, if I'm wearing it crossbody, I'll put it in front and it's kind of like just on my belly, which is not 
doesn't look bad. I only tend to wear my bag crossbody if I'm in a pinch, you know, if I really am like, I need to do something very active, very urgent, I'm going to be like, bam, put it on, and then I'm going to have to like use both arms. The reason that I do that, I mean, this technically is still arms free, and I'll go into, I might as well just talk about it now. This is technically um, still hands free. One of the cons I don't like about this bag, I don't know if it's my shoulder because I have this with nearly, um, with two of my uh, shoulder, shoulder bags with, that have shoulder straps, this happens with them. The rest of them, I have three other bags that have shoulder straps and they're fine, um, but it falls off. Like, it just slides off, you know. Um, oh God, I just hit my bag. But it's fine. Um, which is another positive, I'll talk about that in a second. But, um, yeah, it just slides off. So if I am in a pinch and I need to do something, you know, and I need to be very active, um, then it will just slide off, and so I put it crossbody. You have also the alternative option of doubling it up and wearing it as a shoulder bag. And it just kind of, like, I think it just looks really, really good. Something that I don't really see people mention often is that um, you have the option of wearing it doubled up on your shoulder, right, so it's a lot shorter. But if you do want to do that, a lot of people complain that the chain digs in and then, you know, after a while they're flipping it over and it just gets, you know, all like really tangled up and you're kind of like, oh my god, um, you know, how do I untangle this? The other option actually is to just pop the chain under the bag. Um, so if you just put the chain underneath the bag, what you get is basically a shoulder bag, but you don't have the chain on your shoulder and you don't have the untangling issue. So you just kind of have it like that and it's just a leather strap. Let me just flip this over, there we go. It's just a shoulder strap, a leather strap, and it's comfortable. Now, obviously you can do it both ways, so you can have the leather there or you can put the leather on the bottom as well. So if you just kind of Take this. I usually like putting the strap on the bottom as opposed to the chain. Um, that's because I'm more of a, I just like the chain. I, like, I'm not a person that complains about the chain digging into your shoulder. Um, you know, the Gucci Dionysus bag um, has a chain. Uh, the 255 has a chain. And I have zero qualms. I have um, my Dior Walk that's just a chain. I love chains. I think it yeah, I think it's different, I think it's um, classy, I think it's punky, I think it's a bit more hardcore, um, and I think it's really nice just to wear it like this, you know, you have the strap hidden below, but yeah, so that's different options of wearing it. Hopefully, you know, you guys haven't seen that before, because I think a lot of the review videos, I think all of the review videos I've watched don't talk about wearing the bag like this, so anyways, um, but yeah, so that is a positive, you know, the versatility in the bag is incredible, you can wear it so many different ways. Now another um, positive thing that I wanted to talk about, um, which I had touched on just now, is the durability. So I had just dropped my bag and it hit the ground and my foot, um, and there's no scratches, there's no scuffs, it's so durable. There are two reasons for that. First is because it's really structured. Because it's really structured, you know, it's going to be more hard wearing, it's going to be, you know, things are going to be able to smash into it, you're not going to need to worry about it, it's just really, really hard wearing. Um, the second reason is because of the caviar leather. The caviar leather is pressed, so it's processed leather that's been pressed, um, which means the surface is harder, um, it's a little bit more hard wearing. So you're not going to get scratches as easily. You can still get scratches, but you're not going to get scratches as easily as the lamb leather. Um, and yeah, it's like incredibly durable. So this bag is a really, really hard wearing bag. So for anyone that's rough around the edges, like moi, uh, you do not have, you can be safe in wearing this bag, um, which I can't say the same for the Chanel 19. Um, or the classic flap, because those bags are not as hard wearing. Even if you get the caviar, that's not as hard wearing. However, there is a negative with it being so structured, and that is the corner wear. 
Now, I will give you a close up maybe now, but the corner where is not as horrible. Sophie Shohet, I think, did a video on her boy bag, which was lamb leather in black, and she had massive problems with corner wear. And I think she had owned the bag for like only a year or something. I might be wrong. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't checked. I watched that video ages and ages and ages ago, but I think, um, that, uh, I think she had it for a year and she has massive corner wear. Now that is because of the fact that she had lamb leather. And so it was pretty, um, pretty, uh, delicate. Um, but you can't get away with corner wear when it's a structured bag. My Birkin that I've had for a little over a year has corner wear on it. Breaks my heart because it was like $17,000, but it's got corner wear. My, um, you know, any structured bag um, is going to get, any bag really is going to get corner wear. Um, and if it's structured, it gets corner wear even easier. So you would have seen that on the corner it's scuffed. But it's actually not that bad. If you compare it with the Le Boy that uh, Sophie Chahet had, um, it's really not that bad. Hers was like scuffed, peeling, the leather was coming off. It's just like, it was really bad, but mine's fine. So while corner wear is a con, I think for this particular bag, the wear and tear is definitely a pro. It is held up so well. And keep in mind, I've worn this bag 300 times for, you know, over three years. So this bag, is the wear and tear. You're going to get so many uses out of this bag. And I expect to be able to use this bag for the rest of my life, really. I expect to use all my designer bags for the rest of my life. Um, so this is really, really good. It's a huge, it's a really good investment. So that brings me finally to the end. And a lot of you are probably going, oh, finally, stop talking. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so that brings me to the end. Um, I actually, after three years wearing it 300 times, I don't really have any complaints about it. I don't really, well, and other than the ones that I've already talked about, I don't really have any complaints. This bag is really good. It's been really good to me. I've treated it really well, and that could probably contribute um, to why it's held up so well. But really, guys, this is an insanely good, good bag. So the burning question that everyone's been waiting for, um, is the bag worth the money? And I can confidently say it 100% is. If you guys are thinking about getting a Chanel bag, I highly recommend that you go into the store and see if there are any Le Boy bags that catch your eye because this bag is a really good investment. This bag has just stuck with me for so many years and it's going to continue sticking with me for so many more years to come. And this is absolutely fabulous. So I highly, highly recommend it. And if you, I don't own the Chanel 19 bag, so I can't really say, you know, give you a proper comparison, but if you are considering a Chanel 19, um, and you're not dead set on getting it. I mean, actually, even if you are dead set on getting it, I, I recommend that you just take a step or take a moment and just go into the store and check out a Chanel Le Boy because, you know, like, unless you're kind of like, this style just does not rock with me, I don't vibe with it, it's just not my thing, that's completely fine, no problem. But... If you're like, yeah, okay, I can see myself rocking that, I can see myself wearing that, you know, just keep in mind the back of your head, everything I've said, it's durable, the versatility, it's gonna, you know, you're gonna get so many wear out, of, so many times of wear out of this, it's really good, um, it's just, it fits well, it's just so many good things, the list goes on. Please do consider this bag, it is really, really good. Now, with that being said, I that's pretty much the end of my video. So thank you so much everyone for watching my video today, for clicking. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Please hit that button. Please also like the video as well. Um, the YouTube algorithm in terms of recommendations base it on how many likes as well. So please, it's views and likes. If you do, I would appreciate your support in hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button. So if you guys haven't subscribed, please do because um, as some of you may know, I am doing a big giveaway at a thousand subscribers. So 
I would really appreciate everyone helping me get there because it would mean the absolute world to me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!